Hello everyone, this is the video lecture for College Algebra, Math 1314, Section P.5. We're going to be doing some factoring. That's right. So, question number one. We have this big expression thing and it says, factor. <laughs> it looks like a lot, but we can do this. Um, we need to see what is a, in common with each term. What do they all have in common? And so uh, they all look like they have a 6 in common, right? That has a 6, doesn't it? Here, let's check the calculator. 42 divided by 6 is a 7 indeed, so we're good. So yeah, everything has a 6. What else does everything have? An x? True. Everything has an x squared. See, they all have at least two x's. And so what you're going to have to do is factor out a 6x squared and leave them behind. Well, the 6 has been taken out. We took two of the x's out, leaving only two behind. We took a 6 out, so that leaves a negative sign, the 2. And then we had three x's, take two away, we only got the 1. Just write an x is fine. And we already said that was a 7, right? But now we took the x squared away as well, so you just leave it as it is. There's nothing else there. It's just 7. Now, pause for a second. Can you factor this anymore? Like... And I'm going to show you here in just a second, but uh, if you remember, find two numbers. What two numbers multiply to the 7 but add up to negative 2? I'm waiting. Nothing. All right, great. So basically, we're done here. Uh, that is the answer. That's what you type in the answer box, and the program says yay. So um, let's keep going. Number two. This one's a little different. It says factor by grouping. Factor by groupings. So that's a specific thing. So to factor by grouping means that we're looking at this uh, set of numbers, these first two and the second two as two separate groups, and we're wanting to factor them individually. And so I'm looking around here and I'm going to say, what do these guys have in common right here? Uh, well, the three and the two have nothing in common, but they both have x. In fact, they both have x squared. And that's a pretty common thing to factor out of the first two there. And so then we got 3x minus 2 uh, is left over. The 3 and the 2 are there. Take 2 away, et cetera, et cetera. We already did all that. Um, and that's good. But I want to start doing it for this as well. I want to say, well, what's in common and all that stuff. But I want to do this in a mindset, a mind frame, that we need the 3x minus 2 here as well. We need this in order to continue doing the factor by grouping process. If you don't have this, you, you can't do factor by grouping. And so we need this. We need this to turn into the 3x minus 2. Okay? So keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and start factoring. What do they all have in common? Well, it looks like they have a 6 in common. And that's indeed true, a 6. The problem is, is that if I were just saying, oh, we'll factor out a 6 here, you would see that that's a negative 18, so I'd have to have a negative there. And then this is a positive 12, so I'd have to have a positive there. But that's not the case. It's like the, negatives ha the negative signs have changed and all that stuff. So uh, what I want to say instead is that they both have in common not just 6, but a negative 6. Now... I'm pulling out, I'm factoring out a negative sign from both of these and putting it in the front. If you don't believe me, what you can always do is double check. And so to do that, you take your negative 6 and you distribute to both of these. Notice negative 6 times the 3x is indeed a negative 18. And you got a negative 6 times the two, negative 2 makes a positive 12. So that works. That's good. I just double checked myself. This was a correct statement. Check mark. Yes. Now we need to do more of the factor by grouping. We, we separated in our groups, but the, the rest of the process is that, I'm going to have to use a different color here, that we take this 3x minus 2 and we pull it to the front. Now some folks pull it to the back. That's fine. I'm, gonna pull, I'm a front puller, I guess you can say. And so uh, we got 3x minus 2 is in the front. And then what's here is what is left over. So if I took away this 3x minus 2, what's left over is the x squared. And if I take away the 3x minus 2, what's left over is the minus 6. Okay? There is actually nothing else to do on this problem. Uh, we could, like, talk about this factoring later, but that's you, you really can't, and it's not really part of this problem. We're done. That's it. Nothing else. That's factor by grouping. 
So there are a few questions on your homework about that. I did not do every single one of them. I just wanted to remind you about factor by grouping. Um, there's, of course, other resources available to go and find more of this. And, of course, you can always ask me questions. But uh, I wanted to just remind you and show you factor by grouping. And I wanted to do a, a medium hard problem. Number three, factor. That's it. That's your instructions. Factor. So this, when we're factoring this kind of stuff here, what we're wanting to do is this two sets of parentheses stuff that I was kind of mentioning earlier. And I'm just going to remind you, of course, of how this works. You might already know how this works, but I'm reminding you. What we're doing is looking for two numbers that multiply to the 32 in this case, but then they also add to the 14. So two numbers that multiply to 32, but add up to 14. Um, okay. Well, what multiplies the 32? Let's just kind of do a, a real brief summary here. We got 1 times 32. We got uh, 2 times the 16. Uh, we got a 4 times 8. I think that might be it. Uh, but I'm wanting some of these numbers here, a set of these numbers, that will add to make a 14. And I think this is the only set that would. Now, it's not technically adding there, is it? It's subtracting. And uh, we didn't technically have... Uh, a positive 32 here, we had a negative 32. So there's a lot of little things that go along with this process. I didn't choose the very first problem. I chose a, a medium or hard problem, I guess, in this regard. And so I know that the two and the 16 are indeed my answers, but I need to format the negative signs appropriately to make this actually work. And so uh, to get a negative 14, I would actually have to have a negative 16 and then add 2 to it, okay? So this would actually yield that negative 14 adding like I was actually wanting. Now I'm going to ask you that question, what if I took those exact same numbers and I multiply them? Notice that I'm having a negative 16 times a positive 2, and that yields a negative 32. Did I get a negative 32? Yes. So that's good. So in fact, I need the negative to be on the 16 and a positive on the 2. You're done. That's it. That's your answer right there. I'm just going to rewrite it in black so it's a little bit easier to see here. Uh, but that's it. You're done. Nothing else. You could, of course, always double check uh, yourself. And uh, that's good. What you would do is you would FOIL this out. I'm going to write that on the side here, FOIL. Um, I don't think you have to go and do this, but I'm going to just remind you what that looks like. X times X is X squared. X times a 16 is a negative 16 X. Positive 2 times x is positive 2x. And then 2 times the 16 is a negative 32 in this case. Combine these like terms together. And indeed, did I get the original? Yes. Okay, so uh, that's not required. Anything in the blue is not required. Uh, but I just wanted to show you uh, that you can double check yourself. And that is sometimes a good thing. All right, number four. Uh, it says factor, and this one is a lot harder. Now, if you know what you are doing, you could probably set this up like this and probably figure it out not too badly, okay? The 13 is what makes this one very difficult uh, to find the way. It's not like it was in the last problem. It is multiply and add, but there's a lot of extra stuff going on. And this is fine, but there's a lot. Eh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it that way. And so I want to do this thing called the AC method. Now, I know that everyone's got a method. You probably got the box method. You got the diamond method. You got the fish in the water method. I don't know. I've seen a lot of different methods. I'm just calling it what, what I'm calling it. It's called the AC method. And so um, what it is is th this is an A and this is C and so we're multiplying them together and seeing what factors we get from that. And so uh, 13 times 2, negative positive doesn't really matter to me right now. Uh, and we get a 26. So 26 is kind of the number that I'm wanting to break down into uh, different factors. Okay, so then uh, what, uh, make, what numbers make 26? So 1 times uh, 26, uh, 2 times the 13, and is that it? <laughs> See, 13 is a prime number. There's nothing else to really talk about there. So I'm like, okay, I guess there's nothing else here. Um, 
what I'm wanting to accomplish here in this case is I want two numbers that still add up to or subtract uh, to get that number right there. Um, and so the 2 and the 13, can I add those or subtract those somehow to make a 25? Can I add or subtract these two numbers to make a 25? No, you're going to get 15 or you're going to get an 11. Can you take these two numbers, add them some way or subtract them to make a 25? Yes. To make that negative 25, I would need a negative 26, and I would add 1 to it, and I make the negative 25. So that's that's actually going to work. We like that. So let's use those numbers when we're actually going to start factoring here. And uh, the AC method process at this point is that you're going to split that up, this, this component here, into separate, uh, I guess, more simplified components. Okay? So this right here... It used to be the 25x right there, but I split it up into two different littler ones. They don't look littler, but they really are, uh, so that I can go to the next step, and that is factor by grouping. Sorry, I zoomed in on it. That's why it's so important. No, that, was, that was just my mistake, sorry. Um, factor by grouping. And so... What I want to do to do the factor by grouping is I'm going to group these like this, and I want to see um, what I can factor out of this. In fact, here, let me, I guess I'll keep the factor by grouping. It's fine. So uh, what do these have in common? Well, they both have a 13, actually, right? That's 13 times 2. Um, and they both have an x. And so I can say this is 13x in the front, leaving behind an x minus 2. Okay, an x minus 2. Um, same thing over here. So, um, what do we have in common here? What do they have in common? Nothing. A one. I guess you could say a one. Uh, but really there's not much. I'm going to force a one into it so that it's going to be easier for the next step here in just a second. Okay. So that was factored by grouping. I'm sorry. It's kind of in the way now. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to do that. I like the factor by grouping. I want to like, you know, yes, that's what we're doing, but I was just kind of, it's kind of in the way now. Um, okay, so another thing is that I have this x minus 2, and I want to force an x minus 2 right here. They got to be the same for factor by grouping to actually work. And so what I'm going to do is take this, I'm going to factor it out to the front, leave it behind an x, or I'm going to put an x minus 2 in the front, and then I leave behind a 13x and then a plus one. Notice that I had to have the plus one on the outside to make it actually look good. So my final answer for this actually looks just like that. X minus two, 13X plus one. That was a whole bunch all at once. That was a big problem. It really was. Um, I want to do another one with you, okay? So I, I really think that because they're so difficult that maybe we should have a little bit more practice and so I'm going to do all this all over again for another problem, okay? Uh, but the main thing is this: with this AC method, I'm multiplying these two numbers here, okay? I find out which of these will add to this. I split it up, factor by grouping. All right. Ooh, number five coming up quick. Uh, <laughs> same thing. Notice that the six is in the front, and that's what makes it difficult. And so I want to do the AC method just like the last time. Again, everyone's got their own method. I'm just going to show you this one. So 6 times the 35. Uh, it is okay to use a calculator. So 6 times 35 is 210. And so that's really scary. I'm looking for two numbers that eventually is supposed to add 29, but they're multiplied to 210? All right, I guess. So 1 times 210. 2 times, and I'm going to use a calculator to help me out here. I know there's a 2 in there. It's a 105. Is there a 3 in there? Yeah. 3 times 70. Is there a 4 in there? No. Is there a 5 in there? Yes. 5 times 42. Is there a 6? Please use a calculator. Otherwise, there's... Who knows what could happen? Is there a 7? There is a 7. 
I mean, there's so many numbers here. Please, please use a calculator. Is there an 8? No. Is there a 9? No. Is there a 10? Yes, of course there is. Um, we might have to keep going. Is there an 11? No. Is there a 12? No. Is there a 13? No. Is there a 14? I'm just doing using my calculator. Yes, there is a 14, and it's times 15. How do you know when to stop? Well, basically, you see how we're going down, right? And then eventually, you're going to hit the same kind of number where there's nothing else left, and then you would continue all the way back up, right? So uh, that's all of the uh, prime factors of, I guess, or whatever you call them, factors of uh, 29. Not prime factors, they're just factors. Okay, anyways, uh, what, which of these is going to add to the 29? Well, definitely not this guy. <laughs> Uh, no, no, what are you going to get here if you add these? Come on, you're going to get, what, 30-something and 47? No, uh, you're getting pretty close, actually. Oh, hold on, hold on. So 35 minus 6 is a 29. So that's uh, 35 minus 6 would make a 29. So that that's a possibility. Um, I don't think that this would work. This here would get you a 31. So, no. And then this guy right here actually does still get you. Being a little preemptive there. Uh, it does, does still get you a 29. So, we actually got two different options here about which one to select. And that's, that's actually why I do these problems. Because this is tough. <laughs> this is tough. Uh, so, which, which one are we going to choose now? I mean, already it was such a big problem. And we haven't even really done the problem yet. So, just I'm going to give you my intuition as far as all this is concerned. Um, we have a negative here, and we got a positive there. And so, to get the positive multiplied, you're going to have to have two negatives make a positive. Okay? And so, remember that we're not technically looking for 29 here. We're looking for negative 29. And to be able to do that, to get that negative 29, it must have a negative 35 plus the 6... Okay, or I would have a negative 14 plus a negative 15 to make the negative 29. Okay, so notice that this is definitely a positive 6 right here. And so we would have two numbers, but if you were to multiply these together, I know that you're going to get the, uh, the, uh, the 210 like we were originally. I'm sorry because it's a little different. You don't just multiply the 35. Uh, when you multiply them, I know you're going to get the 210, and that's cool, but you would get a negative 210, but really we're looking for a positive here in this case. Um, notice that right here, if you multiply two negatives, you'll end up with a positive, and then you get that positive right there. Okay. So a lot of stuff going on, but I would say uh, try one. If it doesn't work, try the other one. There's a lot of different ways to it, but there you go. This one's the guy. And so what I'm going to do is now split that up to be uh, a negative 14x and then a negative 15x like this. See, I've split it up, that one term split it up into two different terms. And now I factor by grouping. And so this is a group, this is a group. What do they have in common here? It's not 6, but I think it might be a 2 uh, yeah, I'm going to say a 2x, and so that leaves a 3x minus 7. Now, remember, factor by grouping, you must have a 3x minus 7 over here. So, um, in order to do that, in order to get that 3x minus 7, I need uh, to factor out a 5. I think it's a 5. Now, I want to put a 5 right here, but notice that this is a negative and that's a positive, and that's a positive, and that's a negative. And so what's really going on here is we've got a problem. I need to not do a 5. It's a negative 5. And so if you want to distribute and double-check me, that's fine. But it should work now. All right. Finally, factor this 3x minus 7 to the front, and then we have leftovers of 2x and a negative 5. And, oh my goodness, is this problem finally done? <laughs> um... I'm just checking my own notes here, and yes, yes, we are finally done. Whew! <laughs> Congratulations! 
Next problem. Keep going. Yep. So uh, factor the difference between two squares. That's what they have in their directions. Uh, this is not too bad of a problem, but we just have to recognize what's going on here. Uh, this right here is actually 5 times 5. So this is a 5 times 5 action. And this guy right here is a 7 times 7. And the x is x times x and all that kind of stuff. The perfect square stuff or two square, different squares, whatever they say, squares, when they say squares, uh, they mean uh, that we're going to be splitting it up in a way uh, that looks like this. And so I'm going to have a 5x and a 5x. And then we're going to have a 7 and we're going to have a 7. And so you can see that this first part here split up into 5x, 5x. The 49 makes a 7 and a 7. And then because there's a minus sign, which of course is the only way it'll ever work, uh, you're going to have to have a negative and a positive in order to cancel the middle term. Here, um, I have a question for you. What's, uh, what's the middle term here? How many regular x's do you have? Not x squareds. How many regular x's do you have? Zero regular x's. And so that is what you're going to have to add up to. You're multiplying some numbers to 49, but you're adding up to zero. And that's why this positive and negative here, if you actually were to FOIL it out, uh, you would get a 0x in the middle because of the positive and negative action. Blah, blah, blah. It's more of a format. This is the format. You put it in, and you're good to go. It's a lot easier problem than what I'm trying to make it because I'm trying to be a good teacher, and really all you're doing is just looking for the format. So, next problem. It says, factor completely. <laughs> um, okay, I guess... What do they both have in common? A 7. X. 7X. Leaving behind X squared and then minus 1. Right? There's a... How many are left over? You've got to have something there. It's a 1. But the thing is, is, this is great, but they want you to keep going. And so this is that perfect square stuff again, like we saw earlier. But it's actually much easier. Uh, I'm going to remind you of a couple things, okay? So uh, if you had... I'm just going to do something on the side here. If you had a 9, what two numbers multiply to make a 9? A 3 and a 3. What if you had a 16? What two numbers multiply to make a 16? A 4 and a 4. So then here's my question now. What two numbers multiply to make a 1? 1 and 1. And so that's indeed what they're wanting here. And you can put it minus and then plus or plus and then minus. The order doesn't matter. But they do want it looking like that. Here's another one. Factor. Just factor. And uh, there's a 3 in the front. I'm freaking out. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you do something easier than that? Than the AC method and all that? What do they all have in common? 3. And so then you could take a 3 out from each one of these and get uh, easier answers. Oh... Maybe I can factor this kind of easy like. What two numbers add, uh, multiply to the 7 but add up to the 8? Well, 7 and 1. 7 times 1, 7 plus 1. 7 and 1. Both positive, all positive, no problems. And that was it. So when a problem looks like it's going to be difficult, right? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's easier just watch out for that kind of stuff okay when you're going through uh, the homework and last problem so this one looks really hard but it actually is not uh, and I forgot to do the shaded region so there you go it's the inside part here okay so it's kind of like a box uh, like a cardboard box and you're cutting out the corners so that you can fold up the sides and tape them so that it's like a flap kind of thing. But anyways, not a big deal. We're wanting to figure out what that area on the inside is going to be. Um, what's the area of a square? Notice that this is a square, right? And the reason why it's a square is 9x and 9x are the same. Those are little squares too. So what's the area of a square? Uh, well, it's that number squared. <laughs> and that's why it's called squared. Um, <laughs> link times width. Link times width. And so what you're doing here is 9x times 9x. This is the area of the entire big cardboard that you start with in the beginning. But you subtract, you minus, you cut out four 
corners, right? Four corners. And so four times, what's the area of each one of those corners? Well, a corner here is five times five, length times width again, right? Five times five. And so what you're actually ending up with here in the end is nine times one is 81, and then x times x is x squared. And then five times five is 25 times four is a 100. That actually is your answer to part A. Notice that it says do not factor. There you go. And now it says, okay, now let's go and factor. And so we've got to do some more with that. So this is a little bit weird, but in the end, not too bad. Big area, cut out the four corners. All right, so now we're going to simplify this thing, okay? We need to factor it. Uh, what do these guys have in common? Good luck with that. Uh, no, no, we're not doing it that way. Instead, do you see that it's kind of like a perfect square kind of thing? Uh, they got that square idea. Here, let me go back up over to one other one we saw before. Uh, this guy, this kind of guy. It looks just like this one, okay? So what two numbers multiply to make a 25? Five and five. What two numbers make, multiply to make a 49? Seven and seven. What two numbers may multiply to make an 81? Nine and nine. What two numbers multiply to make a 100? Two numbers. Well, it's 10 and 10, isn't it? Put a minus, put a plus. It's just the format. And there you go. That's your part B answer. You factored it just now. And we're done. So again, I'm not doing every problem on your homework, but I definitely want to do the harder ones and show you all those techniques. If you need anything at all, just let me know. Thank you very much, and have a great day.